It is semi-finals underway. Yeah, lovely question yesterday in the press conference. They said to Yastremska, what were your tactics against Noskova? And she said, I didn't really have any. <laughs> I just, I, I, any truth to that, Petko? I mean, when you watch her play, obviously we know how aggressive she is, but for her, is it just about, if I play on my terms, I'm going to make you life uncomfortable? Pretty much, I would say so. And we will see why later as... When the match progresses, we will see why she really has the means to overpower anybody out there. Great serve, very heavy forehand, not only fast, but also heavy. And we could see right here why likes to take the ball down the line very early. So if she can do that, she obviously dictates play and she doesn't really need a game plan. So yes, when she says that, I actually believe her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if now, if I said that, don't believe me ever. <laughs> Started the main draw off, of course, by beating the Wimbledon champion. Sweeping her aside. I got her going. And in the early stages, you can see already what Jill talked about. The first strike tennis, who can get in the first full swing at the ball, will very likely dictate the rallies from there on. Oh. for the Ukrainian. You've played a major semi-final, Andrea. We were talking about it earlier on at the French Open. How different are the pressures? Are they different, the pressures? How did you feel when you stepped out there? I really think the um, most amazing thing at a Grand Slam tournament is that the attention on the individual players rises exponentially. And what do I mean by that? You play a first round, second round, third round, fourth round. All of a sudden, you feel it a little bit more. You're in the quarters, you feel it a bit more. And then the step from quarters to semis is exponentially four times as much. And I talked to, I haven't been in the final myself, but I talked to a few players, Angie Kerber, for example, and she said that happens eight times as much when you then get to the final. And those are energies and things that you have to deal with, especially as, and sometimes I'm thinking it's better to be young because you don't, you have still the innocence of youth. You don't think about those things that much. And maybe it's, maybe it's easier to handle it when you're still young and you don't feel overwhelmed by it. Maybe you don't realize the size of what you're about to achieve, perhaps, is, is kind of perhaps what you're alluding to. Intended, but couldn't have worked out any better. There was a drive, volley, topspin, drop shot. <laughs> I don't think we have a statistic line for that, Petko. Not the last time I checked, anyway. <laughs> 
That's some good body control, though. Yeah. Oh. Potent the serve can be. Very Reba on the right hand side. First set percentage has been, as you touched on, a little low. It's only just hovered above the 50% mark, though, all tournament. Actually, both players, Jastrzemska and Jung, among the lowest in first percentage quota among the eight quarter finalists. And you can see why they take so much risk. They go so big. When they make it, it's so good, but they take a lot of risk and it can go awry. And there's that, I guess, high risk strategy that you talked about in, in how frequently and how early she goes line mm -hmm. in a rally. It's not always the most obvious shot. Well, and especially on that backhand side, most players like to take it up cross court and wait for the right shot. It's a very difficult shot to pull off on the backhand side. It's not as easy to get under the ball as it is on the on the forehand side. And you can see the adjustment that Zhong made here right away. Her second serve, 147, the one before, also around 145. Her average is normally 138, 137. Mm -hmm. So she has put up a bit on pace because she knows her opponent takes a full swing at the second, especially at the second serve. potency of the first serve there when she does make Jeez. it been a bit of a coaching carousel isn't it for this lady in the last six months or so we know there were some changes that she didn't expect in the autumn of last year this has been based in Spain for many years oh. bit of a higher risk is paying dividends already again 147 Ks and it has to be said she has to do it Diana Yastramska among the quarter finalists is the woman with the quickest return on first and especially on second serve her numbers are outstanding on second serve but also on first serves
Quality opposition of that, there's no doubt. Five wins against top 50 players in the main draw, and some going for Yastromska. It's this sort of tennis that's got those victories. It's suffocating, isn't it? Just how early she is able to put the pressure on. Hitting from Diana Yastremska here. Yastremska leads by two games to the Jill, it's one thing to get the power, but it would seem from here she's got some pretty decent length on the ball early stages here already. That's, that's exactly right. It's, it's the depth that's causing such a great success for her right now. And Zhang has had to really hit the ball on the rise almost on some of these returns. But what's impressed me is how Yastremska looks as well. I mean, I know she's been playing great tennis and a lot of confidence right now, but first semi-final for both of them and Yastrzemska right now just seeming so fearless. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that was a long game, so a few people that were just waiting outside are heading back towards their seats. in France for a while now as Jastremska like so many of these players she's been well traveled as a different a variety of different coaches over the years but oh. France has certainly been a base for her it's been some time last year actually traveling without her mum which she said she didn't enjoy at all was six months without mum, but didn't work out. Oh. Likes to have her family close to her. She is out competing. And that is a very good strategy. If you play somebody that takes such big swings to hit with good depth through the center of the court, take away the angles, take away the down the line that Diana Yastrzemska loves to play and plays so, so well. Oh. Those serves used to be an area of real weakness for Diana Yastrzemska before her injuries. When it was important, she would double fault, take too much risk. But she really had it under control over the course of the, well, for her last three weeks. Mm -hmm. behind her second serve. <laughs> She's got a shot of her coach earlier on, Emmanuel Husner. 
It's certainly not been short of passion from the sidelines this week. There he is. This is his own academy just outside of Nice. Big serving here. That second serve a fair bit. Yastramska, if you look through the main draw matches, the second serve has a bit of variety to it. She's quite capable of moving it around the box. It's not really one particular pattern. for her again that fast-paced ball hit through the center of the court with very yeah, good depth it's down. incredibly hard to hit it down the line from there and Diana has done it a few times today but it's not a high margin shot second serve she rather shoots herself in the foot four doubles in fact already and we have had back-to-back -back breaks a up to one just seem to kind of lose the rhythm a little bit of the ball toss more than anything in those serves what a low kind of it's a quick motion isn't it that go that she has relatively quick anyway it is a quick motion yeah I actually like her motion but you're right it feels like sometimes because all of her double faults have gone long i think maybe one into the net but it sometimes feels like because it's so fast she misses the point of the highest mm. the highest point where to hit and connect with the ball and when it jumps just a little bit and she swings at it full at full speed what she always does you just push it wide because you don't get that wrist flick that you need to push the ball back down, especially when you hit it at such fast pace. Yeah, it's imparting the spin, isn't it? Time. Won 10 of the last 11 games yesterday. Did this lady, well, she was down a set and 3 2 to Anna Kalinskaya, but. Once she was able to wrestle back, control, and there was no looking back.
final. Just got a little bit cramped on the ball for once. Of course, as we know, it's the 10 year anniversary this year of Lina's success here in Melbourne. She's been here this week playing in the Legends event. Forty-nine. And Chin Wen too has a fairly quick motion. I think what it makes it so hard to return is you don't see where the ball will go at all when somebody has a motion as quick as these two. And unusually, she has a very open racket face at the back of the swing, Petko, which you wouldn't always teach in terms of controlling the serve. Yeah, she made it. Yeah, we were talking about this in her previous match about her serve. And once she get, gets into the trophy position, when she gets out of that open face, it's really an almost perfect serve. But I do think that with the bit of a jerk and the ball toss and the open record face, when she gets a bit tight, Two a bit tense, off. that's what goes off first. Is that first serve? 15 left. Such an energy to Yastremska, isn't there, between points? You know, kind of feel the intensity with which she carries herself. Oh. It's almost in keeping with the actual her style of play on court, isn't it? it? It's just kind of right there in your face the whole time. Well, and you can see also how quickly she stands up to serve again. And just in her entire game doesn't give you room to breathe, to settle in, to find your way into the match. First rally of any kind of length. And Jastremska emerges from it. 14 left. Big change of pace off the first serve, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe we can ask Jill in the change of ends what she sees in that surf, whether she sees anything from court side. So Jastrzemska with a good hold as she maintains an early advantage here on serve in the first. And Jill, have you seen anything on Jastrzemska's serve? Because she had these four double faults that came out of nowhere in the second game of in her in the second game, yes. Yeah, it's unusual because I feel like it had more to do with maybe some nerves coming in all of a sudden. I mean, she got a quick start going up to love and then all of a sudden just sort of almost looked to me like going up to the serve. She didn't finish it and finish into the court. All of a sudden falling backwards, expecting, almost expecting a big return from Zheng to come on her side of the court. And I feel like if she just continues to keep her momentum going forward and then recovery. That's where the serve has, is a little bit stronger. It's 
And it's been some fast and furious tennis out here in these early stages. Very much in keeping with the way Yastremska likes to play. to give Yastrzemska different paces off the serve Petko because she is such an all-out offensive returner. She is someone that looks to get on the front foot off the serve. So how do you try and disrupt that? Is it being more unpredictable or? So I really think that you have to play with height, you have to play with rhythms, you have to play with different rotations on the ball, and that counts for the surf, but also for the ground strokes. I look a bit at the players that Yastrzemska tends to lose to, mm -hmm. and it's oftentimes players that have a bit of an extra shot in their repertoire that can maybe decelerate the game, that can make extend the rallies, that have a just a bit uh, something different mm -hmm. because it feels like she's changed the contact point change the contact exactly, point maybe a exactly. little and if you t look at her technique because she takes these big full swings if you can throw her off the rhythm oh. those full swings can go a bit wayward right but when she knows where the ball is going to land and where she's going to hit it it's so hard to get out of this So that is though. That was a very nice infliction of pace. And it will be interesting to see whether Chin Wen will get just used to that power that is being thrown at her. Because sometimes you see that, especially with explosive players like Zhong, that she needs a few games, but then she will get used to it. And all of a sudden, she will see more comfortable out there. the most of any serve so far this week that one up the tee she's won more points with that serve than any other one through to this stage of the competition paying dividends again game down nicely done and Andrea, Nick, to your point, that's exactly what uh, Jean has been doing, is trying to get a little bit more topspin overall on her ground strokes in these rallies. And it's Three just Shemsko, the one that's, the clearance of the net is very low. So I feel like the longer the rally goes, it'll be interesting to see if Shemsko can keep up that consistency because Jean is trying to get a lot more rotation overall on, on both her forehand and backhand. done and just what Jill talked Lovely. about the height over the net pushes her opponent back and then the nice infliction of pace right here and she gets the ball that she can do 
whatever she wants with it. Smart tactical play here by Zhang. Remarkable defense from the Chinese. Love 30. And one of the things I noticed about her Pekko is she slides into both, mm. in forehand and backhand. And that's from playing in Spain a little more or not, I don't know, but... Jenska seems to be hurt. Not sure exactly what happened there. They liked it, and no wonder. Undercooked there, didn't it? If that's the right word. Yeah, 142 k's an hour. That is very slow for her standards. I just couldn't quite tell what it looks like. High hip or high groin, maybe. Maybe abdominal. That yep. would be n very bad news if it's the abdominal. Oh. But then she wouldn't be able to serve 173 mm -hmm. k's per hour. So we'll keep an eye on it. On the Asian Games in the autumn of last year, as a gold medalist there, that's significant for all the Chinese players. Pretty much the week after, she went on to win in Zhengzhou, so a very, very good period post the US Open for the Chinese. Oh. was in the corner of Coco Goff for a period last summer. Perry Reba. I actually remember having a conversation with you, Petko, at the US Open, and you were talking to me about an excellent coach you thought he was. think that forehand topspin cross court will yeah. do a lot of damage off of Zhang's racket and absolutely I just everyone was talking about Brad Gilbert when I in fact had seen him do the work on court with Coco before Washington DC before Brad Gilbert was even on the team and I knew that her improved forehand all the things that she had done so well over the course of the US series was due to him and Brett Gilbert. Yeah. But sometimes it was just Brett Gilbert. <laughs> and that's what I didn't like because it was definitely a team effort. Absolutely. Yeah. That just looked a little uncomfortable. 
She yeah, almost doubled it. over as well off the back end. I think she's called the trainer here. Yeah, Stremska has got problems. Four three. Four, Okay, so what's going on here? That does look like an abdominal issue, I have to say. So some treatment or some assessment, should I say, right now for Yastremska. That is where perhaps she felt it most aggressively in that last game, or more acutely. A little unfortunate in that she's come in here having had one fewer day, of course, not than her opponent, but having played her quarterfinal yesterday. That's just the nature of things. It looks as though she is going to go off court here and receive a medical timeout. And without wishing to sound all high and mighty, I mean, the fact of the matter Ladies is. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Yastremska will receive a medical timeout off court. This has been a very, very intense three weeks, right? There's not too many periods if you look through last season where she played this volume of matches in a relatively short space of time. Absolutely. She has three more matches than any other player that has competed today in the semi-final. And yes, she's young, and yes, she recovers quickly. She said, no, just a little bit pain. Now she's running and showed me she has a lot of pain. But what can it, when it can be? I don't know what it is. Well, whatever, we'll certainly have to hope that she is able to find her way to recover out here. Just looking at the total matches she played last year, yes, Tremska. And a fair few, in truth. Just 68 matches over the course of the entire season, particularly at the end of the year. When she looked to try and get her ranking inside the world's top 100 for obvious reasons. Yeah, so it does look like a low abdominal muscle. However, normally, if you're a righty and you serve, you tend to get more problems on the left. Yeah. Right? Because that is, yes. Yeah, as you. Absolutely. So you would see that more often. Jill, do you have any insight from the side of the court that we can't see from our bird's view perspective? <laughs> Nothing um, extra that I noticed, but I, I did. I was courtside for the Yastremska match when she played Azarenka in the fourth round. It was actually a similar looking issue where she kept grabbing her abdominal and her chest, actually. And I felt like it was more just trying to catch her breath. I don't know if it was stress or tension, but she was feeling something during that match for sure. Got through that match, and of course, her quarterfinal match didn't have to play a full match with Noskova retiring after three games. So I felt like, okay, that's an opportunity to, for her to recover a little bit. But obviously, I think maybe a slight ongoing problem carried over from the Azarenka match, because I, I remember that clearly hurt clutching her chest, trying to catch her breath. So I'm not quite sure if it's maybe something similar, maybe something that was accumulating, but nothing extra 
down here that I've seen that you guys have haven't already touched on. Well, one thing we were discussing prior to the injury was the difference in terms of the the shape on the ball from both. Something that was obviously fairly clear throughout the course of the tournament. And it was very obvious in the last game as well. 12th seeds perspective and these numbers Petco well, there's a substantial difference between the two there really is and Jill talked about it beautifully earlier in the match when she said how Jung is trying to get some more margin and height above the net and trying with height to push her opponent back behind the baseline who takes big swings and it almost feels like Yastrzemska is flattening out her strokes today because she actually has a really heavy forehand with a lot of topspin too her and Jung are the one are the two players in the quarter of the, all the quarter finals who have the most margin and the most heaviness on their topspin forehand shots so she seems like she's trying maybe she will say she didn't have a game plan but to me it does look yeah. like her game plan is to get a bit flatter shots into Zhang's forehand who has an extreme grip who needs a bit of time to get under the ball yeah, it's a, it's a tried and tested play, isn't it, against players that are just a little further around. Exactly. Also, the early backhand down the lines that she took, that's also, a, as you say, what, what is the expression, true and tried and... Tried and tested. A tried and tested. <laughs> a tried and tr tested pattern when you know somebody likes to take their forehands from the backhand of the court, from the center of the court, you take the backhand up the line, try to surprise them because they tend to hover yep. in that backhand corner, waiting for the right ball to move around. So very much is on Yastrzemski here to see how she is physically. Oh. Well, and Chin Wen was in the same situation yesterday in the third set, up 4-1, had the momentum going for her and the medical timeout was called for the opponent. Oh. So right you say abdominals is, is almost the worst area isn't it because it, it's virtually the engine room of a tennis player every aspect of every shot involves your stomach muscles yeah even crying after you lost which i used to do a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i couldn't get a medical timeout for that though Pat, definitely not seems to bother her on the backhand side more than the forehand side, it seems to me. Yeah, we can see it here. Oh. Using that second serve because it, it, it's just a slower version of the first, isn't it? There's no, as you say, there's no real spin on the ball. It's a, it's the contact of the second is almost identical to the first. I think that's the one thing she can still improve on that second serve is the she doesn't really have a kick. She serves mostly slice serves, and they can be troublesome against Arina Sabalenka, who's awaiting in the final, who has a huge forehand, and she will just be waiting for that one right there, right? So she needs to develop some sort of a kick or a possibility to go into the backhand side as well with the second serve. So the players can't wait for that shot on that side. 
That actually yes. almost felt like an overcompensation, didn't it? Because that actually did have a little bit, but it was so slow. Yeah, you can see 117 Ks per hour. We talked about it. She's normally average. She nom normally averages around 130, 738. Has picked up the pace a bit today because she's playing of one of the best returners. Oh. That still remains in the tournament. A certain percentage is dropping. That is smoked by the Chinese. What a return. And that is kind of exhibit A, right? There was a great second serve, but Diana knew it was coming. She was already moving there. But that is a very, very... Good shot right there. Wow. What a defense by Chin Wen here. Yes. That was almost like Fabrice Santoro. Yes. He was a one-off, wasn't he? What a player. And Miss French is requesting a replay of the ball. Let's say this. And look at that backhand on the full stretch, how far she's behind the baseline, gets good pace on it, places it perfectly just underneath the knees of Diana Yastremska here. Uh, and I would think twice in approaching Chin Wen over the backhand side. Oh. It's not easy to make her uncomfortable, is it? In that corner. That is brutal depth. Not only are these shots powerful, they have so much depth. Rarely ever do you see Zhang being so rushed by ground strokes. 14. Oh, that's such a rapid rate, Yastremska, even by her standards tonight. And that 
certainly was effective. They liked it. And yet Stromska is in need of a break if it she's to prolong set number one here. Well, that was a positive game. Yeah, nice different look here on that slice. Didn't rush it, but played a slice back, waited for the right opportunity. A nice feel to accompany it all. Strems is going to move from being just inside the world's top 100 to being just inside the world's top 30. What a significant jump that is at the start of a season. Lots to look forward to. Not that many points to defend as well going forwards for her regardless of the outcome today. So this has been a great platform. Attention. Just flew on her a little bit there. Yeah. But that was also a phenomenal return on that really good first serve. There was a bit of a change up with a kick serve, something in between a kick and a slice. Yeah. But and managed to get it over the backhand side. Yeah, and to be honest, she was a little fortunate, wasn't she? Because the forehand was not entirely in her control. is so accurate I think that's why she wins so many points it's almost always right next to the line and because she has a good slider I guess Pekka you, you, you are probably take, yes you're you leaning wanna. a bit aren't you maybe leaving a little bit of room sometimes oh. Looked a bit that was not the right one to go down the line on. Five minutes shy of an hour. Set point for the twelfth seat.
Ming Wan Zhang is one set away from a maiden major final here at Melbourne. Six games to four. Serving here, starting the second. Yeah, and that's been a really Love helpful him. shot for Chin Wen. That forehand drive cross court that opens the entire court. And you can see why Yastrzemska doesn't stop. She runs through the ball, which opens the entire court. And you will never see Chin Wen do that. She always stops and tries to cover the court back. How low she gets on the ball, Petko. Underneath, we talk often about the strength, obviously, coming from the ground up. She really does utilize. She's a great example of that. 14, 30. to think how much more Diana can improve and she's playing First already game, so game. well. I do think that her defensive game is still mm, developable. You know what? I, it's still yeah. to be developed. I do think she runs through some shots that, that open the angle. She goes for too much sometimes, goes for the down the line. Just imagine when she gets a bit more margin on her defensive game as well. I mean, she has a Grand Slam tournament in her. I really think so. Strictly tennis speaking, of course, there are other parts to the game. The mental aspect, the health. Can she remain healthy? Already struggled with a lot of injuries in the past. But purely ball striking, serving, athletically, why not, right? Yeah. If you like a deep dive on tennis, I would suggest that you have a little look in the Tennis Abstract website because there was a lovely piece written by Jeff Sackman who does some great work. And he 
Run a really nice piece a couple of days ago on this lady's serve and just the real 14 oh. uh, into how effective it is. I know you had a good look at it, Petco, and illustrates just how effective that first serve has been over the last couple of years. Well, and talking about potential, she wins the most points after getting in her first serve, and her average just hovers around 50%. What will be when she gets it just up to a 60? Yeah. Oh. And that's something she said, didn't she? I'm working on a higher number of first serves because I know when I make it, I'm causing problems. Exactly. Damn. Damn. We're such nerds, Nick. We kind of are. One game. But at least we accept it, Pep, though. <laughs> Here it is again. We've dissected it a few times. Yeah, you saw the little jerk on that toss up. She holds it, pointing the ball towards the ground for quite a long time before she turns it back up. And this backhand right there hit down the line, but from the center of the court is really hard to pull off. And Diana has managed to do so a few times. But I do think that Jinwen is making strides with getting it back through the center when she is on the defense, rather than go cross court where Diana really. And it's the same. It's exactly the same again. If she, she puts it a bit more cross court, it's a much easier angle to pull off it down the line, and that is one of Yastrzemska's favorite shot that back end down the line. Get left stranded. is not in doubt. It's a set and a break. Jenkins by two games to one. could be done and it was when she was a young girl and she looked up and watched that final Chin Wen Zheng gave her some hope that it was possible she actually left home as an eight-year-old did Chin Wen Zheng to go to Wuhan initially to go and train some sacrifice at that age
And I just love that somewhere around the middle of the second set, she has started to hit the second serves into Diana Jaschemska's backhand. That is very good, but with the forehand, she can really do damage and just shows you that she's not only power and athleticism, but she understands the game. She feels the game. Caught slightly cold by the return. Fifteen balls. There's a chance to recover the break immediately. Played a nearly perfect return game and then just overcooked it. Maybe the change of directions of the second serve kept her guessing, kept her. And it's hard to sit here and say, yes, that's a course. bad return because, as you said, that's what's got her here. That sort of that type of return has won her a lot of matches in the last couple of weeks. order just look at where this one lands wow and that is hit at full pace yes. well and that is the task of Jin Wen here is to give her new looks over and over again so she doesn't find her rhythm. So she maybe makes one but sprays two, makes one but sprays three. That's the task that Chin Wen is faced with here. Mm. Keep giving different types of looks of returns. Oh. Average rally length in this match, 2.7 right now. <laughs> I mean is exceptionally low. Right 
teams. Even her defense wasn't up to rescuing that one. on those Two returns games. and there are moments off the ground I think Yastrzemska she's so good with that clean ball striking and that power occasionally gets stubborn on the back end in particular as far as what Andrea mentioned earlier going for that down the line so soon and she's capable of throwing the spin in but occasionally will get stubborn and just continue to go hard and flat sometimes it pays off like you said just like those last few returns injury look okay Jill I think so right now. I haven't noticed her clutch at it yeah. or grab her stomach at all, so that's good news. the rally breakdown we touched on the average rally length and talking about how low it is the three rallies over nine in an hour and 20 minutes Don't see that very often you have a chin win the moment she extends the rally she is winning 16 out of Compared to 10 on the other side, yeah. when the rallies go over five, yeah. and you can you can sense that right whenever it seems like it's going into a rally, that Chin Wen seems to have the upper hand here. this and it did look as though she was entirely set but yeah and I thought it was actually a really smartly played point by Chin Wen with the going through the center then back behind her but what a response oh. blistering forehand down the line Tennis here by Zhang. Yes. Just shows you how strong she is when she can control the center of the court with her forehand side. Just opens different kind of angles compared to other players. Oh.
just taking a little more time between points here recognizing the the moment maybe certainly wants to keep herself in front Is it that was a heavy ball mm. something we've seen so consistently from this lady of who's able to get ahead early and take charge. Jemska games yeah. with a lot of blistering winners, few unforced errors. But if she can keep the winner to error margin just slightly above, it doesn't even have to be a lot, just slightly because the opponent will rush, will try to make something happen. Then we can really see how she came through so many matches, and you touched on it at the very beginning. She has beaten all top 50 players to get to the stage. Yeah. Every single player she's played here. I'd be surprised if that's happened this, that frequently as well. I actually have the stats on that. I will give it to you. But give me three minutes. semi-final offered a lot didn't it and Arena Sabalenka will get a shot at defending her title on Saturday evening inside the Rod Laver Arena who she faces remains to be seen out here Stromska digging deep to keep this competitive Are you ready for this, Nick? Oh, well, you, 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 you sort of built it up, so I'm ready, Petko. In the past four decades, Diana Jastrzemska would become only the third player to reach the Australian Open final via six victories over WTA top 50 ranked opponents after Martina Hingis, 97, and Dominika Cibulkova, 2014. That's good perspective as well, in terms of, as you say, just the level of opposition that she's had to beat so far. And the ironic thing is, she beat the majority of them in straight sets, where it was in qualifying, where they were ranked a little lower. It was all three sets. But as we know, the depth of the game these days is exceptional. 40 left. What a 
response. Three games. And after those couple serves, just a little smile from Yostremska up to her coaching team. That is something that she mentioned in her press conference the other day of how much she has been enjoying the moment, and that's what has gotten to her this stage. So I wonder if that's just going to loosen her up a little bit now serving with new balls, but it's good to see that she's still enjoying this moment out here, even though she's down a set. in this game. Maybe she either didn't know or she's feeling as though she needs a slightly tight attention. Roof has been closed largely all afternoon into the evening. A bit of rain in Melbourne today. First time, a deceleration on that wrist and on that swing from Yastremska doesn't feel particularly comfortable with those slice shots that Jin Wen. Gets out of these corners, short into the court. Yeah. Stremska's game and emotions. A couple of wild ones. Break points. Oh. Jill, can you let us in how it looked from the sidelines? It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting next to Renee Stubbs and we both just had our hands in the air. You've got to be joking. I mean, the way they were picking up the ball off and the power off the ground is just exceptional. It's, it's hard to keep track of with the ball going back and forth. It was just outstanding. Yeah, they were gripping and ripping the ball over the course of that exchange, weren't they? Neither player was backing down a whole lot either. Look at the depth that Yastrzemska kept as well. It's full credit to Chin Wen Jing for actually having to hang on there. season really came in 2022 for Chin Wen Zheng. She moved from 126 in the world up to the top 30. Last year was a year of consolidation, keeping herself in that position. Already this year, been some substantial strides.
Dirty. And shudders to think the impact this could have back in China as well on some of the numbers that may well be watching on Saturday back home. If she is to reach the final, we know the sort of pull that Li Na had when she was reaching those major finals. I think it's probably fair to say the game has grown in China in the intervening decade, Petco. Absolutely. Absolutely. Li Na, so many great Chinese players. Zhang Shuai. It really helped grow the game. And now also on the men's side, there are coming more and more Chinese players making strides. Zhang Zhizhen. Yeah, Wu Yibing, of course. Course. Had yeah. some injury problems of late, but he was a champion last year on the ATP tour. When it came crunch time, she made all her first serves, she remained extra calm, and she made the right decisions. And so has she for the last three games. This is some very, very impressive stuff. She seems like she's been around for 20 years yep. plus, and this is only her first semifinal and the second time she's been into the second week of a Grand Slam tournament. the sort of control did it in terms of just the, the feel on that one or the feet just seem to be a little slow to it yeah Stremska's perspective oh, and yesterday she didn't miss that one once made all of these really tough overheads. Not today. Yeah. One last chance for the qualifier here. She needs a break to keep herself in the Australian Open. some tournament for Yastromska it really has and hopefully for her it will be a springboard for the rest of the season if this is to be the end of the road hopefully with a newfound 
attitude at times, as you touched on Petco, perhaps has been our own worst enemy to an extent sometimes. Obviously, it's been so difficult with all the personal ah. problems she's had to deal with, but... What a moment for the world number 15. Serving to take herself into her first major final. An opening right there. And you can hear the audible come on. The Chin Wen here knows how important that is. she wanted a beautiful pickup by Chin Wen there that was a great return hit with tremendous depth just nice hands to neutralize it to do with Chin Wen's defensive abilities today. It's taken her to match point. absorbed the pace as she always does and created her own things when she needed to what a bright young star we have on the WTA tour good times indeed Estromska's offered so much this fall by the machine 
She's made life so uncomfortable for so many, Becca. Absolutely, that was a And I also thought, yes, the two back and down the lines, but she played a good return game in the end. She made Chin Wen work for it. And Chin Wen showed that she can, and she showed that she has what it takes to remain calm under pressure. That was absolutely brilliant. Certainly was. Let's hear from the winner, Ms. with Alicia. Well, what a performance. Zhang Chin Wen, your first Grand Slam final here at the AO. How does it feel? Feels unbelievable. I mean, I'm super excited to have such a great performance today and arrive in the final. You know, I think the opponent, she's playing unbelievable tennis and got really good baseline stroke. Oh, it's tough to explain my feeling now, yet yeah, the real first time here in Australia. Thanks for all the support and thanks to my team as well. Well, from all of us here, you looked right at home here on Rod Laver Arena, an incredibly calm player box as well. How have they helped you through this, this event to get to this point, the women's final on Saturday? Uh, you talk about the next match? Your team, your team and what they've done for you. Ah, uh, well, of course we've been working hard. I mean, that's the basic of all the athletes. And yeah, we've been like put a lot of effort on the tennis court, also outside in the fitness, in the treatment, you know, basic stuff. I think it's just little details helps every day. Thanks again to my team and uh, I can't do it without you guys. Thanks. You have so much support here in Melbourne, in Australia. I know so many Chinese fans here. But would you like to say... I, I thought you could finish with a few words in Mandarin for all of your supporters back home in China. Of course. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, your new women's finalist, Zhang Chin Wen. Well, you've got to love her game on the court, and you've got to love her personality off it, haven't you? She has charisma. She really does. She is a bright young star and more regards than one, of course, on the court. But also just brings that it factor to the game. Yeah. Just has poise and something, something extra. My Mandarin is somewhat limited, but I get the sense that what she said there was quite energetic at the end. She meant it. My, my Mandarin stuff said she she. Unfortunately. Yeah, me both. We should ask Novak to translate. Wow, that's true. That kind, of, that kind of goes for any language though, right? I mean. Yes, exactly. <laughs> going to be some final, isn't it? A lot, of course, will depend, I suspect, on how she copes with the occasion. That's always the unknown, isn't it, Petco? But, I mean, from what you've seen of her, what are your senses? How is she going to cope, do you feel? I honestly think she will cope well. She seems like a very calm person. She doesn't seem to get too high or too low on her emotions. I don't know her that well, but yep. that's how she seems. I thought it was all, you know what, to me, the more difficult part for her was to get through this part when everyone expected her ever since the quarterfinal to make it to the final. I think that was the much harder part to have so much pressure on yourself when you haven't been to these stages in any form or way on a regular basis at all. And now this is a bonus she can only win. She's playing at the moment the best player on the tour. But she's not so far off, and she has the power to match Arena Sabalenka, and we will see a tremendous final. We'll see a high quality of play. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Two excellent semi-finals this evening as well that uh, end 
just 20 minutes before the men's the day of the men's semi-finals and this is what we have in store under the lights of course on saturday evening the 12th seed will take on the second seed here and in the end nick everything is fine <laughs> how we talked about look at these seeds jumping off like flies where are they the draw is falling apart and in the end we have the second best player in the world the world number two and we have a very young super talented ching wen Zhang that we expected to do well at majors anyways who's the 12th seed so all is good in the end absolutely plenty still to look forward to we hope you enjoyed our coverage tonight from myself, Nick Lester, alongside Andrea Petkovic and Joel Kravas, we'll say goodbye. <laughs>